these are the last two concepts in this uh, network theory subjects that is magnetically coupled circuits and duality principle right so first we will discuss the magnetically coupled circuits or uh, go inside of this magnetic coupled circuit first we will recall the inductance concept that is if a coil is there which is having n turns right inductance coil which is having n turn if a time varying current is flowing through this coil a magnetic flux will be generated across this coil so this is called magnetic flux generated across this coil due to this time varying current and due to this uh, magnetic flux is generated so due to this there is a voltage induced in this coil so so that is due to this according to the faraday's law now according to the faraday's law according to faraday's law the induced world is generated or induced world is is equal to this number of turns into the time rate of change of magnetic flux right so v is equal to n into d pi by dt right so why it is our time varying magnetic flux is see when we apply the time varying current so there will be magnetic flux is generated depending on the number of turns we will get different different fluxes for each turn so that is v is equal to n into d pi by dt now this pi is the proportional to this magnetic i mean the time varying current so can i write like this n into d pi by da due to this current what is the magnetic flux is generated into i can write di by dt now this number of turns into the magnetic flux generated due to this current is called the inductance parameter l which is di by dt into l so this induced voltage is directly proportional to the the inductance parameter into the time rate of change of current so that is di by dt now what is n l here so l is equal to n into d pi by di so that is l is equal to n into d pi by di now what is this l is called this is called self inductance why it is called self inductance means see this inductance is relating the the induced voltage uh, which is due to the in uh, this uh, time varying current in the same coil see this voltage is developed in this coil and in this coil due to this uh, time varying current so there is a magnetic flux generator so these two are in same coil so that's why it is called self inductance right so this relation we can find in the different manner so what we discussed in the uh, beginning of the lectures that is uh, the inductance parameter so there I, I we have given this total flux psi is equal to n into pi so this pi is for each turn and this total number of turns are n so n psi is equal to n into pi and this total flux is generated due to this current which is directly proportional to i now which is equal to l into i which is the this proportionality constant l right psi is equal to l into a again here the up induced voltage v is equal to we can say t psi by dt right this time the time rate of change of the total flux is nothing but the voltage now what is here psi psi is equal to l i l is constant so l into di by dt so this is the induced voltage in the inductor so either way we can uh, derive this the induced voltage is in the inductance coil, right? So this is about this inductor. Now, and why it is called self inductance, and what is this uh, Y, and what is this L? So just how to remember when you go to the magnetic couple, magnetically coupled circuits, right? Now, what is this magnetic coupled circuits means? So first we need to know what is the mutual inductance. <coughs> so it's very simple. If two coils are brought together, that is, suppose it is a inductor on the L1 and inductance L2 brought together, the now see the magnetic flux caused by current in one coil. Suppose there is a coil one, so there is current in this uh, coil L1, right? So the adjacent one also will be the coil with links with other. See, so the flux also will be generated in this other coil also due to this magnetic i mean uh, time varying current in this coil 
one so that is i1 thereby inducing the in the latter so due to this current so there is a magnetic flux generated in the this inductance as well as it will generate a magnetic flux in the other adjacent coil also so due to this there will be a induced voltage in this that is v2 so here v1 so due to this there is a self inductance l1 so we'll get some induced voltage v1 and due to this uh, adjacency in this uh, time varying current is also developed a voltage across this other inductor or we can say this will be generated a magnetic flux in the other coil so in the opposite direction also suppose there is a current in this i2 so due to this there is a uh, self uh, magnetic flux and also it will links the other uh, adjacent inductor so that is called generally here we will get the v1 and this is v2 so due to this i2 we will get induced voltage in this self inductance and they are it also links the the adjacent one so it will be generated as an induced voltage in v1 due to this current i2 so that is called generally this phenomena is called mutual inductance so whenever these two are brought together then only due to this current i1 so there is a flux generated in the other coil also so whenever there is a flux generated so voltage will be induced similarly like this so these are the two conditions again i am repeating the the statement when two inductors or coils are closer to each other the magnetic flux caused by current in one coil links with the other coil thereby inducing voltage in the later that is here we will get an induced voltage due to this current flowing in this this coil right so this is the mutual inductance now we will we'll see the two different conditions in a mutual inductance or magnetic coupled circuits so even though these two uh, coils are physically not connected so generally we say these two are magnetically coupled magnetically coupled that is why it is called magnetic coupled means so due to the current flowing in this uh, l1 there is a flux will be generated in the l2 so which is this is uh, l1 and this is l2 and which is having which is having n1 turns and this is having suppose n2 turns right why it is called magnetic coupled means so due to this current flowing in this l1 so there is a flux is generated in the l2 so it is also linking the l2 due to that so there is a voltage is induced so physically not connected but magnetically connected or coupled right now when we apply the same concept for what we discussed about the inductor simple sim self inductance one now we'll get the mutual inductance uh, conditions what is that right so due to this current i1 so there is a flux is generated in the l1 that is called pi11 and due to this uh, current i1 so there is a flux is also generated in the adjacent coil that is called pi12 now what is the total flux that is pi1 is equal to pi11 plus pi12 so this pi1 is across this this inductor l1 that is the total flux this is total magnetic flux magnetic flux across l1 right and this pi12 is only in in uh, across l2 magnetic flux across l2 right so pi11 plus pi12 is total flux magnetic flux across this inductor parameter l1 and uh, this uh, pi12 is only across this inductor l2 right now if i apply the faraday's law across this so what we will get so we will get this induced voltage v1 is equal to the total turns n1 into d pi1 by dt this is the total flux across the inductor l1 so which is pi11 plus pi12 now similarly what is v2 so v2 is induced voltage due to this current i1 so due to magnetic coupled or mutual inductance so v2 is equal to the into into the flux is here pi 1 2 by dt now so what is this d pi 1 by dt is due to this current flowing here so what we have we can uh, represent or uh, replace so d pi 1 by di 1 into di 1 by dt 
right so this is v1 and here v2 is equal to again here n2 into d pi 1 2 by d i 1 because this pi 1 2 is generated with the current i 1 so that's why it is d pi 1 2 by dt so d i 1 by dt so here we can say represent this n1 by d pi 1 by t i 1 is called the self inductance that is l1 across this so d i 1 by dt and here v1 now here v2 is called this parameter is not self inductance this is generally it is called mutual inductance of inductance coil 2 with respect to the 1 so that's why it is called m21 di1 by dt so what is this so it is called mutual inductance parameter mutual inductance m so m is generally is called mutual inductance so why it is 2 so we we'll say mutual inductance at the inductor uh, l2 the other coil l2 the to the current or due to inductance of l1 right so that's why it's, it's called m21 di1 by dt so this is how we can find this v1 and v2 right now we'll see the other case that is <coughs> this one case 2 that is now we are applying the current through this inductor l2 and we are assuming that the in the inductor l1 the current is zero so here again n1 turns and n2 turns see when we are applying uh, two different conditions we have to uh, assume that the opposite direction there is no current right so only due to this we are getting the inductance as well as the linking the other inductance right so in the previous case also we are assumed that the i2 is zero now here we are assuming that this i1 is zero now if i apply the again the faraday's loss here so due to this uh varying current so there is a flux generated in this uh, l2 as well as it is linking the other inductor l1 so the total flux across this uh, l2 is pi 2 2 plus pi 2 1 right so due to this i2 there is a linkage flux linkage in the l1 so that's why it is called pi 2 1. now this is total flux across this inductor l2 and pi 2 1 is only across the inductor l1 so again if i apply the paradise law v2 is equal to this is n2 into d pi 2 by dt and what is the v1 v1 is n1 into d pi 2 1 by dt right so again due to this current i2 so we get plus so it can be written by d, d pi 2 by d i2 into d i2 by dt similarly this can be written v1 is equal to n1 into d pi 2 1 by d i2 into d i2 by dt so what is this this one is we say self inductance of our L2 so L2 into di2 by dt this is v2 but here what we will get m12 mutual inductance of the inductor L1 due to the current i2 so that's why it is called m12 and this m di2 by dt again it is called mutual inductance parameter so why it is called uh, m12 is the mutual inductance at l1 due to the current flowing through the i2 which is in l2 right so that's why it is called v1 is equal to m12 into di2 by dt right we'll talk about the again the mutual inductance parameters so so from the case one so we got the m21 so m21 is called mutual inductance of coil 2 so coil 2 with respect to coil 1 why it is is in case one we seen the current flowing in uh, inductance l1 so there is a flux linkage is generated in the this l2 something like this so this is current is flowing i1 so in this case i2 we got as zero assumed as zero so due to this l1 so there is a in the inductance there is a flux linkages in this l2 also so that's why there is a mutual inductance of parameter m21 here so 
that is generated in this L2. So that is called M21, M mutual inductance of coil 2. Similarly, in case 2, we have seen due to this current I2, so there is a flux linkages in the L1 also. So that is called mutual inductance parameter M. So that is M, M12. Right here, we'll get the mutual inductance that is M12, which is mutual inductance of coil 1 with respect to coil 2. Right, so how to find this mutual inductance or uh, what is this value C R A? So generally, we can prove that M12 is equal to M21, then it is called M, mutual inductance parameter M. So the derivation is not required for us. So we can remember the both are equal. So they will give the question also both will be equal M. Right, now what is M is equal to? This is called K into so depending on the L1 and L2, we will get the mutual inductance parameter M and this is called co coefficient coupling. Coefficient of coupling, right? So depending on this magnetic couple, so they will give some coefficient if they want to find the magnetic, uh, this mutual inductance parameter. So depending on the L1 and L2 values, we will get the mutual inductance parameter. So generally, the K range is 0 less than or equal to 0 less than or equal to 1 right so that is a k parameter so ideally k will be so ideally k is 1 actually so so due to this what we will get m is equal to simply root of l1 and l2 right whenever k equal to 0 will get and the coefficient uh, mutual co coefficient will be 0 that means nothing will be linked in the other so Whenever there is a uh, mutual inductance only, we will get some k parameter as 0.5 or 0.6 etc. So there is zero means nothing is coupling. So we can that is a generally we go for without any mutual inductance parameter, right? Now we have to introduce one concept that is the dot convention. So what is this uh, necessity of this dot convention is? So we have considered two cases that is. This I1 is flowing in this uh, L1 somewhat like this and we assume this current is 0 in this. So we got two expressions V1 and V2. Now see de depending on the current direction of I1 so we may get the uh, either it may be positive it may be negative. So one, the moment we know the current direction of I1 so I can write easily the V1. So if it is in opposite direction we will get the negative directly. But we don't know what is the uh, v2 even though m1 and m21 or m which is a, always is positive but this v2 can be positive or negative depending on the this what is the current direction and what is the polarity so suppose this is entering so we are getting positive suppose it is leaving we may get negative of this v2 right similarly this two cases will get in this also this uh, v1 can be positive v, uh, v1 can be negative this v2 uh, depending on the current direction we can get easily so v1 in this case and v2 in this case no problem but these two are the important so we cannot find directly the current uh, polarities or uh, what is the polarity of this v2 and this v1 in this case right so for that reason we may introduce this this dot convention suppose if i substitute uh, here one dot and here one dot if both are entering so we will get the polarities if both are leaving or if one is entering one is leaving depending on that conventions we but before that we need some uh, conditions like this so depending on this uh, right hand rule and right hand rule under uh, Lenz's law right hand rule and Lenz's law so we can uh, find the this uh, flux and current direction see so take your uh, right hand see that suppose we can get three uh, different cases when current is of uh, giving it to the uh, l1 side input side so so depending on the how we are uh, this wounding the uh, uh, coils so depending on that the flux will be generated so take your uh, right hand now see this this current is like this is entering in this side so entering and it is coming and again it is entering so what is this current direction so you fold your fingers like this and what is the 
this thumb is indicating that is a flux direction right so always so uh, what do you call uh, fold your fingers the with the direction the current direction and the thumb indicates your the flux direction or flux linkages so in this case it will be upward this is a pi similarly if the current is suppose entering in the the c once it is entering the current same current should be leaving similarly the second case if this is countering and uh, this uh, suppose this is one and this is one dash this is one and one dash now if it is country current is entering in this uh, uh, one dash terminal so how would see see when it is entering so it will be come back like this so i have given the notation something like this something like this now just fold your uh, this fingers like this right so th because this is the current direction right so this is current direction of how the your thumb is indicating in the downward so the flux will be in into downwards will be generated <coughs> similarly if you see the third one the wounding we have here taken in different case see here this is here no y and here suppose y is so same current direction is same but wounding is different so here the current direction is like this now again if you take your fingers and put it like this uh, fold like this so this is the current direction so what is the flux in case will be generated so it is also down right so only your fingers and the how the, the thumb indicating that is the direction of flux similarly other two case three cases for the outs outside output side from the, the second uh, inductance l2 suppose it is entering and this warning is something like this so this is the current direction or something like the current direction so again if you uh, take uh, the fingers like this so it will be like this so the thumb indicating the downward so the flux linkage will be down the current i mean flux the direction similarly this is two two dash two two dash so suppose in this uh terminal two dash is a current is entering and the warning is like this right so what is the current direction in this uh, warning so it is like this so if your finger take uh, like this so uh, thumb is indicating the upward so the flux linkages or the flux will be gen in the opposite direction of this current similarly the last case same this is two this is two then if current is entering and warning is something like this so see here now same if you take the fingers and the pull like this so you will get the thumb is upward and then you will get the flux in the upward direction these are the six cases depending on the wounding and current direction you will get the flux linkages direction right now if i take this uh, mutual inductance something like this <coughs> so v1 and i1 here and v2 i2 here so see i indicated a dot here right now if you see in both the current are entering into the dot terminal so what is the flux linkages or what is the flux directions we have to see now this is a winding like this so both are same we have taken like this so the flux winding we have taken the same format so the current is entering here so it is also entering here now take the your uh, right hand and fold like this so the current what do you call it, the flux linkage will be upward see here so this is called this pi 1 1 is self link uh, flux for this inductance l1 so when it is like this so it is upward and coming back to the down right so the flux linkage is direction will be in this direction similarly if you see this up uh, the second one so it is downward so when it is downward means so down means so it will come back again right so downward on something like this right so this is pi 2 2 this is pi 1 1 this is pi 2 2 now what happens due to this what is the flux in the generated in the l2 or similarly what is the flux in this and due to this l2 so take this current so same as like this so it will be pi 1 2 something the same direction of this one now what happens to this uh, due to this pi uh, l2 what is the uh, flux in this uh, pi 1 i mean sorry l1 what is that so same something like this so it will be the same direction of this pi 1 2 and pi 2 1 will be same so see here so this is downward so when it is downward it should come back again 
right the flux will be rotating in this direction so whatever the same direction it is come like this so the pi 1 direction and the pi 2 1 direction also will be same right because of this linking between this uh, l2 similarly this is linking with the l1 right so just follow your right hand rule you can get easily the directions so depending on this directions we will get the m1 to m21 easily <coughs> now if i write this one see so what is this pi v1 so v1 you can simply you can get l1 into di1 by d2 right now in this case what we will get v2 right so is it positive or negative we can easily check so v2 is equal to this direction is like this right pi 1 2 right so we'll get here this is entering and this is also entering so we'll get this m21 di1 by d2 is a positive similarly in the second case we'll get this v2 same as l2 into di2 by d2 so same uh, the current direction what happens in this case v1 see v1 is again we will get positive m1 to di2 by d so mutual inheritance of 1 l1 and this is 2 to coil 2 right the flux linkages are same so we will get m1 to is also positive Now we'll see the four different cases. So generally we'll get in the, the questions. Now if this is I1 is entering, so dots are connected like this. So both are entering suppose, right? So this current direction is also we can assume as same. And seeing this uh, second, so one is here. So the dot at this entering direction, one is at the leaving direction. Similarly, when I uh, take the current i2 so it will be entering one will be leaving similarly so in this case it is also leaving in this also leaving. so different different cases we can take easily now depending on this what is the v1 and v2 will get so in this case v1 is equal to suppose this is l1 this is l2 so v1 is equal to l1 into di1 by d2 and v2 will get positive m into di1 by d2 right so if i assume this both currents are something like this so i can get the both are positive or just we have seen the flux linkages will be in the same direction right in the same opposite case we will get this v1 same as l1 di1 by dt this is l1 this is l2 and the mutual inductance is m and uh, the v2 will get minus m di1 by dt right the dot is in the opposite of this similarly if i take this one so this is not the dot so here and here the dots are there so what is the v2 v2 is this is l1 this is l2 so we'll get l2 di2 by dt now see this is entering so what happens here so generally if you consider a, the current direction it is leaving right so this is opposite case so we'll get this v1 is equal to minus m di2 by d2 right in the last case so both are in same that is the opposite uh, out of this uh, inductor so it is leaving current so we'll get v2 as same so whatever the current direction is same so we'll get v2 l2 into di2 by d2 but see, this is minus m we got so we'll get here v1 is equal to plus m because both are in the at the out of the edge sense right so current will be always in leaving direction so here we we'll get m into di2 by dt it's very simple if you assume the when current is entering so it is a positive so both should be current entering right if one is at opposite case we'll get minus here also see the opposite will get minus but here we'll get same because positive will get because both are in leaving positions right so if you remember this uh, four or one more thing see here we get like this also if you remember those concepts you can easily get so if both are entering or leaving we'll get positive so one is at opposite directions you will get negative values so just remember this concept so very easy to solve right